This presentation will cover the rationale of timing the start of orthodontic growth correction using cervical vertebrae maturation stages. Individual skeletal maturity can be assessed by means of several biologic indicators. Increase in body height, skeletal maturation of the hand and wrist, dental development and eruption, menarche or voice changes, and cervical vertebral, vertebral maturation. The main features of the cervical vertebral maturation CVM method, as described previously by Frankie and co-workers, included uh, such features. In nearly 95% of North American subjects, a growth interval in CVM coincides with the peak in both mandibular and body height. The cervical vertebrae are available on the lateral cephalogram that is used routinely for orthodontic diagnosis and treatment planning. The appraisal of the shape of the cervical vertebrae is straightforward. The reproducibility of classifying CVM stages is very high, and the method is useful for the anticipation of the pubertal peak in mandibular growth. A series of investigations performed in different parts of the world have confirmed the validity of the CVM method, mostly by comparing it to the hand-wrist radiograph. Panchers and Zuska found that the cervical vertebral maturation method has level of reliability comparable to the hand and wrist method. By replacing hand and wrist radiograph, an additional radiograph can be avoided, thus reducing the patient's total radiation dose. This method we are talking in this video is the modified by McNamara CVM method. To use the method, morphological characteristics of the three cervical spines, the second, third and fourth, are assessed here. The following landmarks have to be identified. We are looking at the inferior portion of the body of the second cervical spine and need to identify the most posterior point C2P, the deepest and the most anterior point. The, this is the deepest C2M and the most anterior point C2A. On the surface of the third cervical spine, which is here, we are looking at the following landmarks. On the superior surface, there are two points C3 upper posterior and C3 upper anterior. The inferior surface has points or landmarks similar to those on the inferior surface of the second cervical spine. These are C3 lower posterior, C3 median and C3 lower anterior. Similarly to those of the third cervical spine, one can identify the points or landmarks on the surface of the fourth cervical spine, which are C4 upper posterior, C4 upper anterior, C4 lower posterior, C4 median, and C4 lower anterior. The measurements which are used for, to identify the stages are the following. The concavity of the lower border of the body of C2, which is measured as the deepest, as the longest distance from the line joining C2P, the most posterior point on the lower surface of the second cervical spine, and the point on the which is the most anterior point on the lower surface of the cervical spine. Similarly to that, there is a C3 concavity, so this is the distance between the line joining C3LP and C3LA to the most deepest to the deepest point on the lower surface of the sec of the third cervical spine. The C4 concavity is similar. This is the distance from the line joining C4LP, C4LA to the C4 median, to the most, to the deepest portion of the lower border of the, four, of the fourth cervical spine. These are the three superior me measurements. The other measurements are the ratios. So C3 bar, this is the ratio of the between the length of the lower base between this measurement 
and the anterior height. So this measurement indicates the shape of the cervical spine. Similar to, similarly to that, there is a measurement uh, of the fourth cervical spine, which is C4 bar. So this is the ratio between the length of the lower border of the spine to the anterior height. The two other ratios are C3 par, PAR and C4 PAR, which are the ratios between the posterior and anterior heights of the third cervical spine and posterior and anterior heights of the fourth cervical spine. According to appearance of the cervical vertebrae, we can identify that the patient is at or close to the following stages of the cervical development. Here are the illustrations of the six stages of cervical development. So this is cervical stage one. The main feature is that the lower borders of all the cervical vertebrae are flat. If we look at the lower surfaces, they all are flat. The other distinctive feature is the shape of the bodies of the third and fourth cervical vertebrae. If we look at them, we can appreciate that both are uh, looking as trapezoid. When we see a patient with a cervical vertebrae having these distinctive features, it means that the growth peak will take place in two years. So cervical stage one means that the growth peak will occur in two years. Moving forward to cervical stage two, the lower border of the cervical two starts showing a concavity. This is the distinction between the stage one and stage two. The second cervical spine starts to develop a concavity on its lower surface. Stage three, we can appreciate that the third cervical spine starts also to develop a concavity on its lower border. And we can also notice that both cervical uh, spine three and four are still trapezoid in shape. Stage four, concavities on the lower border are present on all of the cervical spines we're looking at. The bodies of both, of both C3 and C4 here are rectangular horizontal. So they have changed their shape from trapezoid to rectangular horizontal. Stage 5, the concavities are present uh, on all of them, at least one of e either C3 or C4, it's still rectangular horizontal, we can see it on this diagram, and stage 6, all of them have concavities, and uh, two of them or either one of them is uh, already vertical in shape, and the other one is, uh, is rectangular, rectangular vertical. This is applicable to growth prediction and if we see a patient having the, these features, it means that the patient has already had its growth spur two years before this stage. This is the slide um, that reiterates the, uh, the previous one and the main uh, takeaway is that when we see the patient in cervical stage 3, which can be named as cup cup flat. It means that there is a lower border which is concave. The lower border of C3 is also concave, but the lower border of the C4 is still flat. So this is cup, cup, flat. This is C, the cervical stage 3, which indicates the peak of the growth in this individual. This cervical vertebral maturation method can be used in dentofacial orthopedics uh, with the following guidelines. Uh, when cervical stage 1 or cervical stage 2 are detected, it means that a growth spurt will occur within a year after. Cervical stage 3 is the optimal stage to start treatment with a functional appliance. The timing of intervention, either C3 or C, uh, cervical stage 4, has greater impact on the elongation of the mandible in class 2 patients than the type of appliance used. In class 3 treatment, maxillary expansion and protraction is only efficient when performed at stage 1 or 2. Why is that so? 
one can refer to their previous knowledge of the timing of transverse growth and vertical and sagittal growth. And if we remember that transverse growth is completed by approximately 10 to 11 years in both girls and boys and that the sagittal growth spurt occurs at somewhere at 13 to 14 to 15 years depends on the gender and biological uh, biological features of the individual so if we if we go back to that so this is reasonable why transverse growth takes place a lot earlier than the growth spurred in sagittal direction. Skeletal effects of maxillary expansion are more evident at stages 1-2 than later, when dental velar effects predominate, and vertical deficiency of mandibular ramus can be corrected when used during the mandibular growth spurt, which occurs at stage cervical stage 3, cup, cup, flat. Thank you for listening to the video. Subscribe and leave your comments.